Hi, my name is Marcel Kadiv, and in this tutorial we will be learning how to create a simple geometric primitive plugin for 3D Studio Max using a fears.net wrapper, which you can get for free at the fears website. Prior to starting, please make sure that your .NET wrapper is properly installed. For this tutorial, you should have a basic understanding of how 3D Studio Max works and how to program in c -sharp. It is possible to rewrite this code in any other .NET compatible language, such as Visual Basic and JScript, but we will be only covering c -sharp implementation here. I am using Microsoft Visual Studio as my integrated development environment. However, you can use any other IDE, such as Sharp Develop or Mono Develop, for your projects. At the time of recording this tutorial, I am using Visual Studio 2008 and 3D Studio Max 2010. We will start by opening 3D Studio Max and changing .NET wrapper to allow easier development through its dynamic plugin loading functionality. Once Max is loaded, go to Utilities tab, click on More, and select the Max.NET option. Use the checkboxes to check the Allow Plugin Unloading option. We will now have to restart Max for these changes to take effect. Meanwhile, we can start creating our plugin. Open Visual Studio and create a new project. Because we are creating a plugin and not a separate executable, we will need to create a class library. For the sake of simplicity, our geometric primitive is going to be a simple planar surface. We will therefore call our project Plane. In order to gain access to all of Max's functionality, we will need to reference .NET wrappers interfaces assembly, which is located inside the 3D Studio Max's root installation folder. I am going to do so now by choosing the Add Reference option and using the Browse tab to pick the interface's DLL file. We will only need one main class in this project, the primitive itself. Let us call it plane. We will need to derive it from a geom object derived class in order to notify the system that we are creating a geometry plugin. In order to create a plugin, we need to derive a wire class from a pluggable base class. All pluggable base classes for 3D Studio Max are located inside autodesk.max.plugins namespace. Let us import that namespace now along with the autodesk.max namespace, which contains all the interfaces related to Max. 3D Studio Max has a class called SimpleObject, which is derived from a geom object. This class wraps most of the low-level functionality, such as viewport drawing, heat detection and rendering, and allows the developer to just handle mesh generation. We will derive our class from simple object for this tutorial. Plugin instances in 3D Studio Max are created using special classes called descriptors. These classes derive from a class called ClassDesk and provide information about the plugin, such as its name and category. They also create instances of plugins. We will now create a descriptor called plain descriptor. By deriving this class from ClassDesk2, we are telling Max to automatically see it as a plugin. Max will automatically register and instantiate a copy of this class during startup. Descriptor constructors receive an interface called global. This is the core interface into 3D Studio Max. From here we can access pretty much everything. It is the root of the whole SDK. We will keep a copy of this interface in a private member so that we can use it later on. We will also assign to this private member inside the constructor using the global parameter that was passed into our constructor. Now we will implement the rest of the descriptor's abstract methods by allowing Visual Studio to generate stubs for all of them. We will use max.net tutorial string for category plane for class name make sure to return true and edk indicate that our class is public and can be accessed from max's user interface and specify geometry as our super class id Class ID is a structure in Max that is used to uniquely identify plugins from one another. We therefore have to generate a unique class ID. 
Because we will need this class ID multiple times in our class, we will define it as an internal static member and instantiate it inside our descriptor. Global field used earlier can be used to create an instance of any 3D Studio Max class or structure. In this case, we need to create an instance of a class ID. We can do this by accessing class ID member from global and calling the create method. This is analogous to using a class constructor to create an object. Class IDs take two unsigned integers during creation. We will simply make up random numbers and pass them in here. We will now return our static class ID from class ID method of the descriptor. And for the create method, we will simply return a new instance of our plain class. Like the descriptor, I am going to use Visual Studio's refactoring capabilities to automatically generate method stops for all abstract members. There are three such methods, build mesh, create mouse callback, and notify ref changed. Build mesh is used to generate the actual geometry. Create mouse callback is used to define the user interface creation algorithm, for example, if you want to create the object through a mouse drag. Last method, notify ref changed, is not really needed in this tutorial, so we will just return succeed option. For now, let's leave the other two methods as they are and try to see how our plugin looks at this point. For our plugin to be loaded by 3D Studio Max, we have to put the compiled DLL assembly into plugins slash max.net folder. To skip the whole bunch of copying, we will configure a project to copy the generated assembly into Max automatically. To do this, first open project settings, then go to build events, and post build events command line add copy command that takes the DLL from the current assembly into the max.net folder inside max, max's plugin folder. Now let's build the project and test it out. Load 3D Studio Max. Once it loads, look inside the standard primitives rollout and you should see the max.net tutorial option there. When you select it, our plain geometry plugin is also there. Now it is time to fully implement our plane object. Minimize, but do not close max. Due to our previous configuration, it will now automatically reload the plugin every time it is rebuilt without us having to restart it. Back in Visual Studio, let's create two parameters of our plane, width and length. This will be represented using floating point member variables in our plane class. Let's also create public properties that let us access these fields from outside the class. We will cache our mesh so that it is not generated every time 3D Studio Max requested and only regenerated when either length or width parameters change. Simple object has a method called mesh invalid that signals it to regenerate the mesh next time Max asks for it. We will call this method inside the setter fields of our length and width properties. Note that calling any method belonging to max class, we must first cast that class to appropriate interface, in this case being simple object.